Welcome to my channel. As there's a lot of new collectors coming into Dragon Ball looking to collect Dragon Ball Super cards, um, I wanted to do a beginner's guide on how to collect Dragon Ball Super cards, um, especially the raw cards. Um, so there are three generic ways of collecting. One is collecting raw cards, two is collecting sealed products, and three is collecting graded cards. Um, I'll talk about the sealed products and graded cards um, in some other video and today we're just going to concentrate on collecting raw cards. So in terms of storage, um, there's a lot of ways of storing raw cards. The best way to store is like this. Put the card in a loose penny sleeve and then carefully put them in one of these um, hard loaders. Um, this way, it will ensure that the foils on um, the card would not be scratched or damaged. And this tap, small little tap over here um, makes it really easy to pull out the cards. And it really helps to not damage the card on the process of pulling them out um, by just simply putting a small tap over here. Although this is the best way of um, preserving a card, this is not my favorite method of storing my cards because I love looking at my cards and I love it when I have it in my binder. Um, like it just creates this artwork in the binder that I can flip through without um, damaging my cards too much. So binder looks like a regular, like a planner, but um, mine that I got, it has four slots. Um, each of the slots open in the middle so it would, um, it would prevent the cards from dropping out. How I store my card in the binder? is that I get one of these sleeves. Um, these are surprisingly hard enough to like protect the edges from being bent and protect the surfaces being, uh, from being scratched. And for a little more expensive card, so after uh, putting the card in the sleeve, like this, I often get a penny sleeve to um, put the card in an opposite direction into the sleeve. So that, um, that will really minimize the possibility of the cards um, getting liquid damages. I do that for most of my secret rares and for my signature cards. The third way of um, storing your cards is to just um, put them in a sleeve and store them in, in one of the boxes. I use drop boxes and gift boxes to store my sleeved cards that no longer is in my binder, like this because the size of these um, draft boxes and gift boxes fit um, the sleeved cards. I'm not going to go too deep into the rarity of the cards, but um, Secret Rare is the rarest card. Secret Rares have SCR written on it, and it's very, very hard to get. Um, the next rare card is Special Rare. It has SPR written. It's pretty hard to get the Special Rare that you want, but um, you can, you're pretty much guaranteed to get like two special rares per box. The next level is super rare. Um, it has SR written. It's easier to get. They have around five to six of them in a, per box. I don't collect below super rare, but there's um, rares, which is R, uncommon, which is UC, and common, which is C. I could do another video on the rarity of the cards and um, their pool rates, but I'm just gonna skip right into my binder because um, I really, really love my binder and I can't wait to share my binder with you guys. This is the first page of my binder. Um, these are our signature cards. Um, this is Vegito, Chunks, Gohan, and they're all from Assaults of the Saiyans. The beer is over here is from Tournament of Power, but I chose to put him over here instead of um, the hit because I, I am not a huge fan of hit. The next page of my binder has Frieza and Broly. Um, this is a sign of Frieza from Tournament of Power. And this card over here is a secret rare um, Broly that I pulled from Verm Vermilion Bloodline. Um, these two special rares over here, they're um, from Galactic Battle. That's the first set of Dragon Ball Super booster box that was ever released. Um, these cards over here, um, they're shadow cards. I call them shadow cards because there's a character in front and then at the back, there's usually this golden foiled um, character in black, and I love these cards. I think you can get them uh, from Destroyer Kings and Miraculous Revival. I think these three are from Destroyer Kings. I'm not too sure about this one. Ooh, 
my favorite page. Um, this is Vegito page and this is Gogeta page. Um, this Vegito over here is the first secret rare ever released. It's from um, Union Force. And this card, I believe, is also from Union Force. I love this card. Um, these two cards look amazing in person, but because of the gold foilings, um, they're like really easy to get scratched. So um, it's very hard to get them in a gradable condition. Um, Hyper Rust SSB Vegito. This is from the third set, Cross Worlds. Um, and this one, I didn't really think that it fit into this page too well, but I couldn't get a better Vegito card than this one. So I just put this one over here. These are secret rares from Rise of the Unison Warriors, and these are special rares from Vermilion Bloodline. Oh, I love this page. Um, these are all SS Force uh, Gokus. Um, this one is from Cross Worlds. Um, it's a secret rare, and I just love him. Like the draft box over here, I chose to keep it just because because it had him on, in there. This one, um, as is for Goku, Heart for Plea, and um, Triple Flash, as is for Son Goku, I pulled both of them. Um, this one is from Colossal Warfare, and this one, I believe, is from Malicious Machinations. Um, this Twin Onslaught, as is for Son Goku, I thought it fit in here really well, but in terms of the picture, just look at the artwork. Um, I felt like this Gogeta over here actually fits here better. I'm still debating whether I should put um, two SS4 um, Twin Onslaughts over here or two Gogetas here. This page is another page of secret rares and uh, special rares. This is Miraculous um, Fighter SS3 Gogeta. This is a secret rare that I pulled from my first video. And this is the first secret rare that I ever pulled. Beyond Darkness Demigra over here is from Colossal Warfare, and I opened a case of Colossal Warfare um, premium packs on the, in one of my videos, and I pulled it, and I pulled it from there. This is SS3 Goku over here is from the newest set, Battle Evolution, and I really like this card, but unfortunately, after opening five of the booster boxes, I still didn't pull him, so I just went ahead, spent like 55 bucks, and got it from PCG Player. I also pulled this one while I was trying to pull this. Hide of Mastery. This one um, is also from Colossal Warfare, and I pulled it while opening that case. And I just really love this card. Um, I like it more than some of the secret rares. It's just the artwork is amazing. And just because I pulled this card, I decided to make a page of Ultra Instinct, which is this page. Um, this one's not Ultra Instinct, but I just um, put the Godbreak here because I really like Godbreak from Galactic Battle, but I couldn't find so somewhere else that fit in um, the binder better than here. The next page over here is another Earth Ultra Instinct page. I love this card. This is from Cross Worlds, um, the third series that was released. And I just got these other cards to match this card. The reason why I didn't put um, this Ultra Instinct Goku in the previous page is because um, these Gokus have gray hair and this Goku has black hair. It's, <laughs> I know, it's such a stupid reason um, to organize my binder like this, but I love it and I think that's all that matters. Um, these cards are, this one's not a shadow card, but then I really felt like it fit in this page well. Um, this is from Universal Onslaught. And the rest of the cards, I just felt like they fit in here perfectly. Ooh. This Frieza is a secret rare from um, Clash of Fates. And this Goku over here is a special rare from Clash of Fates. Um, I feel like, I personally feel like those two are the best cards from that set. And I constructed this whole um, page because I really liked how Goku was yelling at Frieza, it's over Frieza, and um, they're from the same set. So I decided that to make a non-golden Frieza page over here and make a Goku and um, just a golden page over here just to match up. Um, I really, really like this card. This is the scene where Goku first turns Super Saiyan, and um, that scene was just so iconic. Like, I have this card, and I also have um, Goku's back version um, in the foil. But that card is unfortunately still on its way here, so I decided to put SS Gogeta the Unstoppable as a placeholder. This is the Gohan and Trunks page. Um, this Gohan is from Destroyer Kings, and it's, I think it's the best Gohan card. But uh, yeah, 
This one is North America Finals. I felt like it was really special that um, this Gohan card that I really liked had this um, stamp that made it super special. So I put this one over here. Um, a Nine Spirit Zone Gohan is a Judge card level 2. So Judge cards are cards that you can obtain by um, being a judge in like um, events. Um, you have to get like judge certified and level twos are so rare and um, which is one of the reasons why I like collecting judge level twos because I love rare cards. This one I wanted to get it in um, the judge version but unfortunately it was going for too expensive so I just decided to put this over here as a placeholder for now. These two are my favorite Trunks cards and um, this is a series 7 pre-release. Pre-release um, pre cards I think are also very very rare. They usually only have one to two of the pre-release cards on TCG and I bought a lot of pre-release cards because I like the fact that my binder is unique and probably nobody else would have the same binder as me. This is a um, Chunks Judge Level 2 card. Like I like Chunks with purple hair and I think that might be mo one of the reasons why I got these two cards. This page over here is a Shine One card. This is from Destroyer Kings, and this is, I think, from Miraculous Revival. Um, this Shine One is the card that I pulled. Um, I wanted to pull this, but I ended up pulling the Super Rare, so I just ended up buying the Special Rare. These on the right. Um, the reasoning behind me getting them is probably the most stupid reasoning ever. Uh, they're just very, very, very rare. Um, I cannot, I could not find another copies of them on TCG. Like I bought the last ones. Like this date over here is very special to me because that is 2019 is the year that I graduated from college and July 26 to 28. I believe that those three days, um, were one of the last times that I partied like a college student. Um, it was right before I started work. So I went out drinking and like just partying with my friends. It was sort of like my last celebration before officially being a working adult. Um, these ones are iconic attack rares from Universal Onslaught. Um, Dragon Ball Super sometimes have like very weird like rarities, like iconic attack rare, like noble hero rare. Like it's, it's kind of interesting, but um, sometimes in different sets, they might have different rarity cards. Um, this one, I was gonna put a cell Iconic Attack Rare on here, but I didn't really like Cell, so I just put Goku Focus Breakthrough that I pulled from Malicious Machinations with um, this and this card that I pulled from there. Ooh, my favorite Judge page. Gogeta Hero Revive Judge, um, Endless Broly Judge, Kaioken Goku Judge, and uh, Super Saiyan 3 a Goku Judge. Um, I put a, a Series 8 pre-release over here instead of putting another Super Saiyan 3 Goku Judge because um, by the time I bought this, it was going for like $300 and I really did not want to pay like a huge sum of money of getting both of them. I think these are both going for around $100 and this one's going for $70, I would say. This is a Judge Level 2 page. Um, I just collect collected random Judge Level 2s and I felt like it was super cool and... I especially like this Vegeta over here. I feel like this is the coolest um, Judge Level 2s in this page. The next page over here, um, these are Judge Level 1s. This one's Level 2, but I wanted to put it with the Kid Goku over here. Like, um, so I just moved it from the front to here. Uh, I felt like these two cards really matched. I like putting a pre-release with um, the Judge promo. I feel like it, it, it just, the, the combination just gives me a lot of satisfaction. This is another judge card over here. Um, this is not a pre-release, but I felt like these matched really well. Ah, these two cards are very sad stories. I paid 140 bucks for both of them, and now they're at like you can get them for like fifty dollars. I don't know what got into me. I just had to get it, and I paid like a ridiculous sum of money to buy these cards. Um, I really like these cards. I feel like the foil cards are very unique that they have the use of letters on the back. This is a Beerus and Wiz page. I pulled this card and this card, but the rest I decided to purchase because I really like um, Beerus and Wiz. And this is a Series 9 pre-release. I purchased this one because I felt like um, they're both with Celestia on um, Moderator, like they just matched. 
after collecting all the judge cards and pre-release cards that I wanted, um, I kind of ran out of ideas of what I should collect. So I decided to collect all the Destroyer and Angel cards for all 12 universes. Like, this is Furious and Ways. And um, these two, I just put it here because, you know, 12 universe, it makes sense that you put a Zeno and him over there. And this Goku, I really like this card, but I somehow felt like this Ultra Instinct card didn't fit into any of the previous Ultra Instinct pages, so I just ended up putting it over here. This page is from Malicious Machinations. Um, this one is the Noble Hero Rare that I previously talked about, and then these ones are Ignoble Villain Rare. Like, such a weird name. I just really like how all the heroes are shooting down from the top, and all the villains are shooting up from the bottom, and they just form this amazing picture over here. Um, these two pre-release promos, I just got them because I really like Bulma's birthday party. These cards, I feel like personally, are the best cards from World um, Martial Arts Tournament. And these two, I just felt like it was so cute that um, this is Goku Jr. and this is Vegeta Jr. And this one's like Goten and this one's Trunks. So it's just like father and son. And if you looked at my other videos or my Instagram, you probably know that I really like father and son collections. Last but not least, um, this one is a secret rare from the newest set, Battle Evolution. Um, I only chose to keep these two cards from all the cards that I pulled because these two were the only ones that I really liked. Um, since I decided to make this a girls page, I put Fearless Pan Judge over here and I put Fidel, um, Miraculous Aid pre-release on the bottom left. I love Fidel. I think this scene is where, um, Fidel was pregnant and, like, to make Super Saiyan God, um, like, she held everyone's hand. So that was the end of my binder review. After filling up this binder, I was really contemplating whether I should buy a bigger binder or just leave it like this. And I decided that I'm only going to keep the top 160 cards that I like in this binder. And I'm going to constantly replace the cards out with the cards that I love more and store the rest of the cards in the boxes or sell them to um, fund my hobby of opening up boxes. Like Dragon Ball Super is a pretty costly hobby, so it's like if you don't resell some of your things and you just want to hoard everything, it's going to be very hard to be financially sustainable. I think instead of um, being doing like a systematic breakdown of Dragon Ball Super and how you should collect, I ended up just talking about my binder and uh, how I collect to you guys. I feel like there shouldn't be a strict standard of what's right and wrong for collecting. Um, everyone's collection should be different and unique on its own way. And collection is not about just getting the most expensive cards. It's about getting the cards that you like in the way that you like collecting. Um, like some of my cards are worth like a grand, um, like crazy expensive now. And some of the cards over here, they're only worth like three, three, four dollars. So um, the way I constructed my binder was purely based on what scene I like, what artwork I like, and um, how I wanted to organize my binder. I feel like for me, binder collecting was the most fun part um, in my Dragon Ball Super journey. And I hope you guys will also have fun binder collecting and just feel free to like share it with me after it's done. And I'm very curious what other people's binders are like. I hope I did a decent job in um, introducing you guys to binder collecting and how I collect. Um, if I didn't do a good job, then I'll try to come up with a better video with like more information on how to collect um, Dragon Ball Super cards. Thank you everyone for watching my video and I'll see you guys in my next video.